Hello everyone, uh, this is the Dyson Ball Multifloor 2. Thought I would do a review and demonstration of it. Uh, I've had this machine for, I want to say, about 10 months now. And um, this, is, uh, this is actually the newest version of the Dyson DC40. So when they first came out with the third generation ball models, they had a bigger one, a small one, and then the most compact. And I've owned them all. And um, uh, the DC40 was the one that was in the middle. It was uh, lighter and smaller. This one is very similar to that, but it's, it cleans significantly better because the cleaner head at the bottom uh, and the brush roll is much, much, much better. So it, uh, it really cleans and vibrates the carpet great. It does a great job on bare floors as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a demo of it and show you, um, show you its features uh, and what I like and what I dislike about it. Um, but for the most part, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a nice vacuum. All right, this machine is uh, pretty much what you would expect from a typical Dyson upright, uh, especially uh, from one of their third gen ball models, which first came out in 2011. Um, so uh, on the back of the machine, uh, you've got the standard uh, uh, quick release wand, uh, which I really like. It's still, I still think Dyson, the Dyson hose and wand setup, even if this one's not as good as some of their older ones, is still largely unmatched on uprights. What I like about it, is that when you raise the um, when you raise the handle upright, it automatically switches over to the hose, so you can just instantly start cleaning. Uh, the hose pulls right out. It's got a quick release cord hook. The wand pulls right out. There we go. You get that that cord out of the way, and then the hose is extremely long, so you can go. You, you can clean upstairs. Uh, you can easily you know reach your cobwebs and things. You can clean all around a room, top to bottom, with just what's on the machine. Um, and then as far as the attachments go, uh, you can, whoops, let me see if I can do this one-handed. <laughs> I was running into this. Set this wand aside. Um, you've got a couple tools right on board, which you can attach directly to the hose end, or you can attach to the wand. Uh, that includes a, uh, a multi-tool. This is a combination crevice tool slash dusting brush. This is the nicest version of that that Dyson's released yet. Their first one, the dusting brush part of it kind of sucked, um, but now it's got nice soft bristles and they're splayed out, so this is pretty nice. It's pretty comparable to what they put in their last last uh, iteration ones, but the crevice tool's longer. Uh, I do like this more. I would prefer, because the crevice tool kind of chokes uh, the suction and will cause this to kind of pull back the stretch hose to kind of pull back towards the machine harder than if this was just a, a wider diameter dusting brush. So you can see it gets narrow there and it kind of chokes, um, it kind of strains the suction, kind of chokes it a little bit and makes it a little bit more laborious to use than it, than it should be. This is a very nice tool, but I, I'm, I'm spoiled from the older Dysons that had a separate very good dusting brush crevice tool and upholstery tool. But this is a nice attachment. Along with that, you get what's called a stair tool. Uh, I've never been too thrilled with this. I think it's kind of crappy, but there are, um, there's all kinds of different uh, Dyson accessories you can get, and you can get much, much better options. But with their newest canisters and um, uprights in the UK, they're using a redesigned upholstery tool that's vastly superior. It's similar, but it, um, I just never really liked the way that this contacted the surface. So like for cleaning stairs, I don't think it's terribly effective, but you can, again, you can get use something like their excellent tangle free turbine tool that, which is awesome for stairs, or you can use uh, one of their many accessories. I have a bunch of Dyson tools, but the cool thing is that again, right on board, you've got most of your essentials that you would need along with a really long hose and you don't have to change any dials or switch anything over. It just instantly switches when it's upright. Uh, moving on from the attachments, you've got two switches here. You've got one to power the vacuum cleaner on and off, and you've got a brush roll on off switch. So by default, the brush roll switch is always set to on every time you turn on the vacuum. Um, and that's because for carpet, you want the brush roll to be spinning, but when you do bare floors, you can easily shut the brush roll off, and you want the brush roll off for bare floors because um, you don't want it to either scratch your hard floors or you don't want it to scatter the dirt all around the floor. So um, when you do bare floors, it's just suction only, but I mean, almost remarkably, it does a surprisingly great job on bare floors. And I'll show that to you in a moment. Uh, the filtration system is still what sets Dyson's apart from other bagless vacuums. They continually have the best and uh, it has what's called radial root cyclone technology. The way it works is all the big dust collects in the clear bin. There's that fine screen there, it's called a shroud. It only lets fine dust into these cyclones. The cyclones um, 
using centrifugal forces, drive the dust and dirt back into a separate sealed chamber inside of the bin, inside the yellow part. Uh, only clean air, or much cleaner air, exits the top of the cyclones. Pop this off. It's really easy to pop off the vacuum. And uh, before the air goes through the motor, it goes to this washable pre-motor filter. Which is, uh, it just pops right out. You can just wash this under, under cold water. Um, they say once a month, but I haven't washed this yet, and I've had it for 10 months. But I, I also have other vacuums, so I don't use this as much as a typical user. I would say you would probably want to be washing this every three to four months, but uh, Dyson says one month, I think, to cover their asses. So uh, that just pops right back in. Now, as far as uh, emptying it out, emptying out the bin on this is easy enough. You just push this button again. And there's uh, Dyson has these trap doors on the bottom. They almost all have these now, but Dyson invented it. And that just opens up, and you can dump it out. Dust likes to get caught on these little things here. They're called baffles, and the weird angle of this. So you may have to shake it a little bit. Uh, and if you overfill it, or if you suck up something too large, like a paper towel or a sock, and actually makes its way to the bin, it might get stuck in this narrow gap here. As you can see, it gets pretty narrow there. You may have to reach in and pull dirt out, which is kind of gross. This screen. Uh, we'll build up with dust over time. We'll need to be cleaned from time to time, but you can push that gray button there and this whole clear uh, outer part of the bin comes off and then you can clean it off. Um, because the bin is so small, uh, some stuff, if you overfill it, dust will get trapped in the top. Now, just to go ahead and compare this, um, this is the uh, ball multi-floor that, that this one replaced. You can see the bin is uh, quite a bit smaller. Um, now with both of these still on the market, what's what's really disappointing about Dyson Uprights is that on their canisters or their um, new handbags, they have what's called a um, a self-cleaning shroud, and or they call it the hygienic dirt ejector. It's a great feature because um, on this one, the biggest hassle is that dirt and dust can build up at the top, and then you have to touch it, and it's uh, it can be gross. With this. Um, it's much, much easier to empty, and because the screen self-cleans, everything just dumps right out. It's much easier. In fact, let me show you. All right, so with the ball multi-floor too, when you want to empty it, you just do that. If you need to, which you will from time to time, have to clean that screen off in there, or if something gets caught in there and you can't get to it, you can remove this, and then you can wipe this down with a towel or a, or, you know, a brush or something like that. Get all the dust out of here and, uh, and go, go about your way. So... That goes back like that. It's not bad. It's it's not bad, but um, if it, if like if I was living with a large family or if I had multiple pets, this is small. You'd have to empty this maybe multiple times if you were cleaning a large home. Anyways, now if they made emptying it very very clean and easy, then that's one thing. So this is their um, this is part from their big ball canister. I actually I really like this machine, uh, but one of my favorite things is the way it empties. So. It's got a self-cleaning shroud. You just push this here. And when you do that, the shroud gets wiped down by this red rubber um, squeegee inside the bin. Then you push it a little bit more, boom, it all drops out. And everything drops out every time. It's great. Uh, then you just close it back up and you're good to go. Their handbags have the same feature and it's awesome. So it's disappointing they haven't implemented it on their uprights yet. Now they claim they're done developing uprights. Hopefully that means that they have uprights they've already developed. They have the feature that will eventually come out, but we'll see. Dyson's gonna do their own thing, so we'll just have to see what they, you know, where we end up. And so while it can be messy to empty, I will say, um, I still really like the benefits of bagless vacuums. I love being able to uh, just dump the dirt out when I'm done, put the vacuum cleaner away, and, uh, and just move on from it. If I go, for instance, if I take this somewhere and I clean someone else's home with it, or uh, use it to clean out somebody's car or something like that. It's nice that I'm not taking that dirt back with me home. Uh, I, I really like that feature. So even though uh, this one can be, um, it can be a little bit messy or it can be gross if you occasionally have to get in there and clean this out, I still think the benefits outweigh uh, the cons of the system. So anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, one of the things that makes this machine so much better is that it has a, a, a significantly improved cleaner head. So like I said, this is based off of the DC-40, and it's basically, because this brush roll is so much better, it's like a supercharged version of it. I owned a DC-40, and I returned it because the carpet cleaning performance on it was extremely disappointing. Um, 
and they updated it and then they finally in the u.s we finally got one a machine very similar to it i think there might be little differences with this than the 40 but the biggest one is that the cleaner head is just much much better so let's take a look here and i'll show you a demonstration of this how it vibrates the carpet so as you can see i should have cleaned the brush roll out okay so the brush bar itself uh it's driven by a motor in here um there's a i think there's a belt in there but uh so it's in two parts um Cleaning it off is easy enough because you can run a pair of scissors or a knife along these little indentations here. They designed it that way. Uh, you can also very easily remove this bottom plate if you need to. Let's see if I can. There's two clips. So if, you, if something got stuck in there, you can easily pull that apart. Um, but this brush roll, you know, even though it's only one row of brushes, uh, the brushes are stiff. Uh, they protrude out of the bottom plate a decent amount, and they really vibrate and just beat the heck out of the carpeting. So you actually get really really good performance and uh, if you'll notice here there's these little notches here uh, that's if if something gets stuck in there it won't wrap you know it'll help prevent um, like a sock or something from getting jammed in there potentially damaging one of these plastic components is the whole thing plastic um, but the bottom plate doesn't have a bunch of notches in it it's actually just one open thing which you know that's um, just from using the DC-41 and the DC-65, the first versions of these machines, they left really bizarre asymmetrical carpet lines that were kind of ugly. I know that's like totally not a thing that anybody's gonna normally care about, but this one leaves beautiful carpet lines. And it's just one of those things where you get done and the room looks awesome and, uh, it, and it, yeah, it just looks, uh, it just makes a little nice difference. So, um, and I'll show you how it does on carpets and bare floors. Uh, the setup works very, very well. Uh, I'm very impressed with the performance. Okay, hey, like most Dyson uprights, this vacuum cleaner features two washable filters. This is your pre-motor filter, which is uh, goes inside the bin in the top here. You just wash this in uh, cold water. They Dyson claims don't use soap. I'll be honest, if they're really bad, if you use a drop of soap, a lot more dingy dirt comes off of them, but they don't recommend doing that. Anyways, uh, that just drops back in the top of the bin. And then there's a washable HEPA filter. Um, uh, the machine feels, uh, features sealed HEPA filtration, so all the air that comes out of it, allegedly, is uh, very, very nice and clean. I've never had problems with it, but I have seen uh, videos with, uh, with uh, issues with seals. Some of their older models, like the DC-25 and 24, had problems with the seals on these, and they would whistle, and it was annoying. I haven't had any problems with these. But anyways, same with the other one. You just wash this in, uh, with cold water, tap it out, let it dry 100% before you put it back on. It pops right onto the side of the machine. And then you put uh, the uh, the ball half back back on, and you're good to go. All right, this is Dyson's third generation ball technology, and next to it I have the first Dyson ball upright, the DC15, which I think was from 2005 or 2006. And obviously, over the years, uh, it's kind of taken over uh, their entire lineup. Now all their vacuums have have uh, ball technology, and it's nice. It's influenced the industry heavily. Uh, a lot of vacuum cleaners now have swivels and. Um, What's cool about it, uh, when you lower it, it switches over. You can easily, uh, you know, get around uh, chair legs, table legs, things like that. Um, it does make it very maneuverable, and it is night and day compared to their older uprights, which handled like you know push lawn mowers uh, and were very bulky. These are uh, these are a lot easier to zip around. So I, I do like it. I like it. And what's cool, it's amazing compared to the the first one how all the duct work and everything is now inside the ball. Uh, it's not all around it. So it's kind of amazing how far this stuff has come. Okay, now let's see how the uh, Dyson Ball Multi-Floor 2 does on carpeting. So just doing one pass, uh, kind of slow. Uh, there was a variety of um, different sized particles there from uh, sawdust all the way up to uh, rice and dry oats. And outside of where the, where the belt rides, um, it got most of it. It left some behind, but let's keep going. <laughs>
take a look at the bin there. Um, a lot of a lot of dust, a lot of fine dust. Um, I don't know if how hard it was to see, but uh, it actually did vibrate the carpeting quite a bit. And I'm gonna try to get a shot closer so you can really see that, because um, that one row of brushes actually, again, you can feel it the floor. It really vibrates the carpet. My carpet's kind of like a loose, cheaper nap. So uh, on certain rugs, I think on a tighter nap or on a, like a rubber backed area rug, the, its performance would be like the effect would be pretty dramatic but um regardless uh it yeah it gobbles it right up really i mean it cleans great okay let's see if i can get the positive agitation in action here It really vibrates and you know lifts up that fine dust out of the rug and sweeps it right up Okay, just for fun. I'll show you how this empties. Uh, you know imagine this is a uh, over a trash can And there you go, so a little bit got caught on the um, the baffles there But for the most part well, you can hear stuff falling out of it still. It's not too bad So let's go ahead and spread this out and see how it does Okay, now let's try the Dyson Ball Multi-Floor 2 out on bare floors. This is just the cheap linoleum in my kitchen. All right, let's see how it does. So you got to turn the brush roll off. All right, now actually that was, that was really impressive. So uh, that's mainly rice and um, oats and sawdust. Uh, but it didn't snow plow much. I think if I had larger particles, it would snow plow them, uh, but it didn't. Uh, and uh, it looks like a clean sweep, so let's keep going. Very impressive. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, it really does a great job on bare floors, especially considering it's not assisted by like a soft spinning brush like their, um, like the, uh, I don't know, like the fluffy head or like what Shark's using now, which just stole this design. Um, considering it's just using suction uh, and there's not even a squeegee on the bottom, very impressive. So to conclude, um, would I recommend the Dyson Ball Multi-Floor 2? Uh, yes, I sure would. You know, I'm not sure that it's worth $3.99, which is what it retails for. Uh, but it does a great job on carpeting and hard floors. Uh, I like the attachments for it. The wand is uh, handy. I like how versatile the machine is with just what's on the cleaner. Uh, it's actually easier to dump than I thought it would be when it was full. Um, it's not too messy, you know, for a bagless. And I like the bagless convenience. Uh, the washable lifetime filters, things like that. Um, it's maneuverable. I like the ball technology. Uh, and it's got a long cord. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. As far as cons, uh, I wish the bin held more dirt, but you know, if that's something you're concerned about, you can get the larger model, which is the Ball Animal 2, which is actually identical to the original Ball Multi-Floor that this machine replaced. Um, so if that's a concern, that one holds a little bit more dirt, not a ton more, but a little. Um, it is loud. They, they make no qualms about it. This thing is not quiet at all. Uh, it's much louder than the current European Dyson uprights, which had to meet EU regulations. They aren't allowed to be over 80 decibels in sound level. Uh, we don't have those same laws here, so this thing is much louder. Um, uh, but uh, it's fun to use. I wish it were quieter, but uh, that's, you know, that's not a deal breaker for me. Um, let's see here. As far as other things, um, I can't think of too much else that I'm dissatisfied with on the machine. Uh, for the most part, I'm really happy with it. 
Again, I, I probably wouldn't pay three ninety nine for it. I actually got a pretty good deal on mine. They they frequently run sales on these, and there's some places where you can get additional coupons. So I paid, um, I paid between, uh, I paid up less than two forty nine for this one. So and I've been very happy with it. I wouldn't get rid of it. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and uh, have a great day.